In this video, we're going to take a model from Autodesk Inventor and put it into Autodesk Simulation CFD for some virtual wind tunnel testing. The first thing we need to do in Inventor is to add another component to our assembly for the wind tunnel volume. You'll note that it extends a fair way around and especially behind the car, yet the bottom is flush with the bottom of the wheels. The exact dimensions don't matter as much. It's more a matter of ensuring that if you change the model of the car that the wind tunnel is in the exact same size and position so you have repeatability and can make comparisons. After you've set this up, you come up to the simulation tab and click on active model. It will ask you to save, which you can do. And then we can simply accept all the default parameters. Okay, once it opens, we'll see we have our model in the background, but we're having two warnings here in red. So we'll follow what it says to do. Edge merging tool comes up first, and we'll click merge. And now that reads zero. Small object removal tool, remove. And once again, reading zero. Diagnostics complete, no more warnings. Okay, first thing we need to do is to click our wind tunnel part and we're going to set it to outline so we can see the car. This will allow us to rotate the camera to get the correct orientation and then we'll come to the view menu and set the current view as home. Currently all of our components are unassigned so we're going to right click and edit on the wind tunnel volume and leave it as the default which is that it's a fluid set as air. All of our unassigned materials are the actual car so we're going to edit those in one go, change it from a fluid to a solid and ABS will be fine for what we're doing. We can see that we have nothing unassigned. Next we set our boundary conditions. We want air to flow from the front of the tunnel. We click on here and we set it to meters per second and we set it to 20 because the track is 20 meters long and the cars cover it in approximately one second. Now we spin it around to the rear surface, click on that, edit. Not particularly intuitive but we need to change it from velocity to pressure and then leave everything as is. Sometimes you might need to play with doing an auto size of the mesh, other times you can just ignore that and go straight to solve. We can leave everything as is here, click solve and we wait for the process to begin. Okay, it's finished creating the mesh, it's saving it, putting in all the parameters, writing them into files and now it's very close to starting the actual simulation. Okay, so the convergence plot has come up and it's going to start working through the iterations. So we told it we wanted to do 100. Basically the way it works is it continues to simulate over and over until all of the values settle. You can't do it a single time, it will be unreliable. However, if you do it 100 times or 200 or 300 and so on times, eventually these curves will stop waving about or curving and they'll become quite straight. That's when we know that the simulation is finished and that the results are reliable. In particular, the Z axis here is the most important one for us to be stable because that's the direction the air is flowing. Things like the X velocity are the side to side. That's nowhere near as important. However, the Y is the second most important because that will dictate whether we have downforce or lift on our overall design. So it's a matter of sitting back and waiting for the iterations to hit 100 and then assessing the results. Okay, so our first 100 iterations are done. If we come back to the convergence plot, we can see that they're starting to flatline, but there's still some potential variation. So what we're going to do is go to solve again 
and do another 100. Okay, so another 100 iterations have finished. It finished in the middle before and it looked like green was stabilizing, but now we actually see it's diving down low. Now, our most important one, pink is getting flatter and flatter, but I think it's probably safe that we run another 100 iterations. Okay, so I ran it a few more times and then eventually it says it was complete. And if we look at the iterations, it only went to 437. So the program has judged itself that everything is stabilized and therefore we're ready to look at results. The first thing we need to do is, like we did the first time, to set our wind tunnel to outline so we can see inside the car. Next step after that is to add in a plane. If we click on it and then edit it, we can rotate it 90 degrees and then we can move it to the front of the car or very close to is fine. Next thing that's common for these analysis is to add traces. So we're going to use a rectangular grid and we might go five wide, three tall. We'll add the points, switch the camera to the front. And now it's waiting for us to click. Wouldn't recommend doing them too high. We add the trace set. Now when we spin the camera around, we can visualize the flow. And since we're now finished with this, we can set that plane to be an outline so we have a clearer view. By clicking on trace lists, and you can get back this box by clicking on traces up the top, you can change your sets here. You can change the properties, you can make them skinnier, you can change whether they're cylinders, ribbons, things like that. You can even have an animation of them going over the car, which can be saved as a video file. You can also add multiple sets and delete sets as you go. What I haven't found is a way to show and hide different sets if you wanted to set up more than one and then look at the various parts of the car, which is a little bit frustrating, but it's not too bad a workaround. The other common thing that people like to calculate is the coefficient of drag. It's not altogether obvious, but we need to go to wall calculator and then we need to select everything, but we don't want the drag of the wind tunnel. So therefore we have to click on the six surfaces, spin the camera around. Notice they're changing from maroon to blue. Okay. That now means we have all of the surfaces of the car selected except the wind tunnel and we want to do it in force and we want to click Newton's after that we can click calculate. It switches to the output tab and it's telling us how much drag each individual component has. Scroll to the very bottom and we have a summary. So we have the total surface area of our car. And then the X, you need to look at what's labeled. So the X is the side to side. This should be a very small number. This should be quite negligible. We have the Y, which is the downforce or lift. And then most importantly, we have the Z, which is the front to back. And this will tell us how much drag we have here. So the simulation has said that we have minus 0.64 Newtons. The important thing is not this number outright, but if we were to change our design and run the same simulation with the same parameters and wind tunnel size, therefore we can look and see if this number gets bigger or smaller to determine whether there's more or less drag overall. There are some other things to play with up the top, such as ISO surfaces, which you can experiment with. They'll tell you about the pressure buildup around the car. But the main two things you want to do is visualize the airflow with the flow lines and then the overall coefficient of drag.